Let's take a look at what Kevin does with another of his strokes, namely his volley. Here, Kevin follows the official edicts to a T. The usual collection of the rules, which would be familiar to anyone who has ever taken a tennis lesson and got as far as the volley. Take a look on the forehand. Two o'clock, twelve o'clock, and the ten o'clock. Those six footwork patterns are going to move you into position, so you're going to hit some great balance volley. So think of a high ball, the ball away from the body. On a medium ball, medium distance from the body. On a low ball. Next thing we want to talk about with the volley footwork is the step forward. We're going to go with our opposite foot, so on the forehand, it's going to be the left leg, backhand, it's going to be the right leg. But here's one little helpful hint on that volley step. If the ball is coming kind of right in your sweet spot, right here, it's not down low, it's not super up high, I want to see if you can hear your step happening at the exact same time as that ball is hitting your string. So we get to use all the senses out here on the tennis court. So as the ball's coming in, your step is happening at, exact, at exactly the same time. And that's going to give you the most out of your legs, the most out of your timing, and there's nothing going on here with the wrist. I'm going to hit a few, and you can take a look and see what it looks like. Kevin doesn't simply deflect the ball. Just as the instructor here, he makes a very deliberate step forward and goes after it. He always attempts to punch it. The overall productivity of such an exercise speaks for itself. The figures don't lie. One. And uh, look at these numbers. I mean, Rafa not coming in that much, but when he does come in, he wins every point. Anderson under 50% coming to the net. The pain of that pass. Well, not only, you know, not putting away, but you see he's see how much of the court's open. You got to think about well, maybe Nadal's going to be there. You got to be ready for the next ball. Gets right on top of the net, so Anderson's making those volleys much tougher than they really are. Just kind of block it more, not swing through it as much as he is. Yeah, it was a little better there, Darren. Right, move forward there. 
To your point, John, didn't take as big of a swing. Just blocked it. Blocked it. Hit, covered the line. Pace. Still yep. should have hit that one better. Nadal had a pretty good look there, but see, that's where you got to make him earn it. Nadal's condemned. Well, he is burned even less fuel than you typically would see en route to a Grand Slam final. Look out. Yeah. Yeah. He's lost four points on serve in the match so far, so stress free. They now give the. This is a couple beautifully struck balls by continue. Anderson. Oh, <laughs> no, the real breeze. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one he has to play more often for me. And he's just been getting into this cross court pattern because Carino Busto defends so well. He's been able to extend these rallies and stay in them. But every time that ball sits up, nine times out of ten, take that forehand down the line and then move to the net. He's not going to win this match from the baseline. Different player. Now that's good stuff, and it's amazing when you take the tension out of the body. And start flying around the net like a mosquito. As for Kevin's occasional triumphs at the net, one just has to remember that even a broken clock gets to be correct twice a day. That second serve that wrapped around two sides of that frame. I don't know how that second serve went in. That's going to be two feet wide. That ball. Three pieces of luck for Anderson <laughs> in that point. He had the lucky charm in his pocket on that. It does look a bit like a fish out of water up there at net. Winning less than half the points there. Naturally, all of the above brings up the question, what might be the reasons for such a shoddy performance? Here, there could be only two possible perpetrators. One, Kevin himself. And two, the very methodology, which he so desperately is trying to put into practice. Clearly, Kevin is not your regular fumbling slob who is incapable of getting anything right. On the contrary, he is an exceptional athlete. He and all of his cohorts are truly rare specimens, blessed with the ability to perform pretty much any physical feat way above average. And just for that reason, Kevin has to be excluded as a culprit. So, the only thing which remains a suspect and must be questioned in this case is the methodology itself. <laughs>